Hello and welcome to the third video for the Algebra Part 1 Review Module. Here we're going to review the basics of variables and solving, one of the most fundamental things we do in mathematics, and a key part of the thing that we call algebra, at least all the way through high school mathematics. So the idea is we have some unknowns. And an equation with an unknown is implicitly a question. So an equation like this is a question, what number, x, can fit into this equation and make it work? And we have unknowns that we're looking for in mathematics. A lot of mathematics involves trying to figure out certain numbers in certain places and applications. These often get expressed as equations. So we're trying to figure out what value of this variable works. In this case, if we put in x equals 9, 4 plus 9 is indeed 13. So x equals 9 is the solution to this fairly straightforward thing. So that is the answer to the question implicitly asked by this equation. You should think of each equation with a variable as implicitly asking a question, and you're trying to figure out the answer to that question. And these can be simple, or these can be complicated. If I look at a more complicated case, this time the variable is called p. If I put in 2 everywhere that p is, so there's p, there's p, put in 2, 2 squared is 4, 7 times 2 is 14, so 4 minus 14 plus 10 does in fact equal 0, that works. But if I put in 5 as well, where the p was, 5 squared, 7 times p is 7 times 5, 5 squared is 25, 7 times 5 is 35, 25 minus 35 plus 10 is also 0. Both of those work. And that's a case. An equation can have more than one solution. There can be multiple answers to the question of what values of p satisfy the question asked by this equation. And in fact, you can have infinitely many solutions. Here's a very silly equation, h equals h. That's true for all numbers. All numbers are equal to themselves. So the solution is h can be any number. Any number whatsoever. That says number. You can have a very silly equation as well. h equals h plus 1. There are no numbers which are the same as themselves plus 1. Plus 1 gives you a different number. So this thing has no solutions whatsoever. And all of these things can happen. We have infinitely many solutions. We have no solutions, even with relatively simple equations. Now I want to walk through a bunch of examples of solving. Hopefully, again, most of this is review. But the terminology and the notation, again, I keep repeating this throughout these modules. These terminology notation things are important. So this might be a way of manipulating, a way of talking about solving equations that is different from your background. So it's worthwhile talking about to give you a sense of how the typical mathematics situation in an English Canadian university works. So here's an example. The key thing with solving equations is the principle that we preserve inequality by doing the same thing to both sides of the equality. So the whole process of solving is taking an equation, doing the same things to both sides. So here I have an equation in an unknown q. And I want to try and manipulate it to figure out what q is. So I have all sorts of things that I can do. I can do infinitely many different things as long as I do them to the, the same to both sides of the equation. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add 6. I can add 6 to both sides of the equation. On the left side, the plus 6, the minus 6, that's nothing. If I add 6 and subtract 6, nothing has happened. Those go away. On the right side, 9 plus 6 is 15, and I get, hopefully, a simpler equation. The process of trying to solve is trying to do things to both sides of the equation to hopefully make it simpler. Uh, now I perhaps can notice that a lot of my things are divisible by 5. I'd also like to get rid of the 5 in front of my variable q. So I can divide everything by 5. So I divide the left side by 5, divide the right side by 5. This should be a cube. Um, and then I can split this up. We talked about this in one of the modules previously, that we can split up numerators of fractions is essentially the distributive law. And so the first fraction, 25q over 5, 25 over 5 is 5, and then I have 15 over 5 is 3, so I split this up and I get 5q plus 3. And again, hopefully then, by dividing both sides by 5, I've created something that's easier to work with. Each of these steps, again, there are infinitely many choices what you can do in mathematics, but we're trying to do things that are hopefully going to make our life easier to make our situation more clear. So now I have q on the left and q on the right. I'm going to try and group all the q's together, and I'm going to do that by subtracting 5q from both sides. Again, I do the same thing to both sides of the equation. 
So on the right side, q minus 5q, so I have one thing, so I have minus 5 of them, that gives me minus 4 of them. And here, 5q minus 5q, subtracting from it, from, subtract anything from itself, and it goes away, so I just get 3. And then finally, I can divide by minus 4, um, 3 divided by negative 4. With fractions, that's the same thing as negative 3 quarters, as I'll talk about in the fraction module. And that is the solution to this original question. What number satisfies that equation? What happens to the number negative 3 quarters? Let's do a couple more examples in this video. So here's another example. Here the variable is x. There's a bunch of different things I could do. I could divide by 5. I could try and get rid of the minus 7. What I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply both sides of the equation by 3. And on this side, dividing by 3, multiplying by 3, that doesn't do anything. If you have something, if you divide by 3, then multiply by 3, you haven't done anything. The 3s will cancel off. But I do have the multiplication by 3 on this side, and then 3 times 5 on this side is 15. And then I can distribute the 15. It's not one of the things we've talked about before. And this isn't something I'm doing to both sides of the equation. This is just something I'm doing to the left side of the equation. But the distributive law doesn't change anything. It's not adding or, sub or subtracting or multiplying or dividing. It's the same expression, just written in a different way. So I'm allowed to do this. I'm allowed to do this distribution. 15 times 7 is 105. And then I have this step. Now I have an x on the right and 15x on the left. I'd like to have all the x's together so I can deal with them a little bit easier. So what I did on uh, this step is I subtracted x from both sides of the equation. x minus x, anything minus of itself is 0. 15 minus 1 is 14, so I get 14 x's there. Then I added 105 to both the sides of the equation here. Plus 105 minus 105 goes away, I get 14 x. 0 plus 105 is 105. And then finally, I divided by 14. 14 over 14 cancels off, so I just get the x left over, and I get that the value of the variable that satisfies this is 105 over 14. So please notice that I'm being very, very careful that anything I, anytime I do something that changes the situation, I do the same thing to both sides of the equation. The only exception was this distribution, but that doesn't actually change anything. That's just taking the same expression has the same value and writing it in a different way. One last example. Um, here I have this division by 3. I'd sort of like to get rid of that. So the first thing I'm going to do is multiply both sides of the equation by 3. The 3s will cancel off on the right. 12 times 3 is 36. And then I'm going to subtract 4t times both to both sides of the equation to try and get rid of this 4t because 4t minus 4t is 0. 32 t's minus 4 of them, 36 minus 4 is 32. I think I said 32, I should have said 36. So 36 minus 4 is indeed 32. The t's are gone, all I have left is the negative 7 here, and then I can divide by the 32 and figure out that my variable t that solved the original expression was negative 7 over 32. One last thing before we finish this video. Oh, I actually have another example. I thought I was all out of examples. Let's do one more example before we finish. Uh, here's an example where I have a k in the numerator and denominator. Uh, I have to be a bit careful here that uh, k can't equal 0, or else this expression isn't defined, but that's fine. As long as k is not equal to 0, I can multiply both sides of the equation by k, and then the k's are going to cancel off here. And that'll give me 4k over here, then I can subtract 4k from both sides of the equation. 4k minus 4k is going to give me 0. 7 minus 4 is 3. Again, done the same thing to both sides of the equation. Then I can add a 2 to both sides of the equation to get rid of the negative 2. And then I can divide both sides of the equation by 3. And I get that k equals 3 halves. And this example actually starts to get into the thing that I wanted to mention at the very end of the video, this worry about whether or not variables are 0. And I had to worry about it there because I had an expression with a variable in the denominator. But sometimes variables don't show up in the denominator. We still have to worry about it. So consider this equation where a is our unknown. Now, both sides of the equation are multiplied by a. So I can divide both sides of the equation by a. And that cancels the a's off and leaves me with a simpler equation. And then what I do here is I add 6 to both sides of the equation. 
I subtract 5a from both sides of the equation. I multiply both sides of the equation by a negative 1, and I get that a is equal to the negative sign. But back up in this step, this step only works if a is not equal to 0. So whenever you're dividing by something, or in the term that a lot of you might be useful, whenever you're canceling something off, you have to also be aware that the thing you're canceling might have been 0. So I want to also consider the case, if a is 0, let's look back at the original equation. If I put in 0 here, I get 0 times 0 minus 6, and I get 0 times 0 plus 1, I get 0, I get 0. Those two are equal. 0 does in fact equal 0. So a equals 0 is also a solution. So I have two solutions to this equation. And if I wasn't careful about canceling and dividing by 0, I might have missed this second solution. I might have totally forgotten that it exists. So when you're canceling things off that involve variables, be careful for the possibility that the variable is zero and do a special check of what happens if the variable is in fact zero.